Today we're going to use GeoGebra to graph some more complicated trigonometric functions involving sine. So here's a, a standard form of the sine function with four parameters of interest. A constant k, a coefficient a, a coefficient b, and some uh, constant h. Now remember, x stands for how many degrees. So for instance, we could plug in 90 degrees into this function, and depending on what k, a, b, and h are, it would evaluate some y, and we'd end up with some sort of graph. Um, right now, a and b are set to 1, so that's a 1, that's a 1, and h and k are set to zeros. So in other words, we're graphing this right now. This is just our standard, we call it the mother function for sine. So we can see that at zero degrees, sine is zero. At 90 degrees, sine is one, it's maximized. At 180 degrees, it returns to zero. It bottoms out at 270 degrees, and it completes the cycle at 360 degrees. The length from here to here is called a period because we see one complete cycle. So right now the period is 360 degrees. The first parameter we're going to mess with is this parameter A. So let's look at this graph here. What if instead of graphing y equals sine x, we were graphing y equals negative 3 sine of x? So here's A, it's a slider on this program, and when I change it, let's increase it first. As it increases, you notice these peaks, these peaks and these valleys also increase. This length right, I'm sorry, this length right here is called the amplitude. It's half the total distance from the maximum to the mi minimum uh, height-wise. So this is the amplitude. Right now the amplitude is 2.5. So in other words, A tells you the amplitude, but that's not the only thing A tells you. Like here's, here's an amplitude of 3.5, if A is 3.5. A tells you one other thing. If we decrease A all the way down until we get to negative values, what we see is actually the opposite it's of uh, the sine curve. This is the sine curve reflected over the x-axis. A moment ago, at 90 degrees, the sine curve was maximized at 1. Now at 90 degrees, it's minimized. So the whole graph is flipped. Let's see what this graph actually is. y equals negative 3 sine x. If I change this down to negative 3, our a value, we see our amplitude is 3. The measurement of these uh, peaks and valleys is 3. Um, and we have a reflected over the x-axis graph. So let's return this to 1. So A affects the amplitude. Notice one thing. The position of the graph did not change. There's no shifting left or right or up or down. You can look at that 0, 0. No matter what we change A to, the graph is still there. And no matter what we change A to, we're always going to have a peak or a valley at 90 degrees. A does not affect the position of the graph. It just affects the shape of it. Let's add a constant k now. So here's k. What happens if we change k? So right now k is set to 0. We'll increase k. Oh, we increased k way too much. Let me, uh, let me mess with this really quick. Let's change this to... Sorry. All right, if we increase k, we need to mess with that again. Okay, now we should be in good business. Here's where k was at zero again. If we increase k, let's see what happens. The graph shifts vertically up. Decreasing k, it shifts vertically down. Now notice the shape is not changing. All k does is vertically shift the graph in the k direction. So right here, if k is 3, if we change this to uh, 3, now that point that was a 0, 0 is now way up here at 0, 3. And our minimum point that was at uh, 270, negative 1, is now at 270, Two, it shifted every single point on the graph vertically three. Let's reset this to zero and mess around with h. The way you can tell h and k apart is the h is going to be inside the parentheses with the x. 
Um, so this is clearly an H and not a K. The tricky part about H is what's the value of H here? Unfortunately, it's not positive 60. If we look back up here into the formula, it says X minus H. What would you have to subtract to get a positive 60 to appear here? What value would H have to be to make this appear as a positive 60? And the answer is a negative 60. If this was X minus negative 60, this would appear as a positive 60. So here's what H does. We just figured out in this case our H is a negative 60. If we shift this down to negative 60, it's actually shift our entire graph left 60 degrees. Here, I'll just move H around a little bit. Sometimes this uh, is a little dizzying, so a good idea, just follow that peak right there. Here's, uh, here's H when it's zero, that peak is at 90 degrees. If we shift this up to 180 degrees, that peak has slid over to 270 degrees. So H shifts the graph left or right. It does not change the shape of the graph. So, so far, we've seen that A changes the amplitude, how high and low the peaks and valleys are. We've seen that K shifts the graph up and down vertically, and H shifts the graph left and right. This K is really sensitive. The only thing we haven't seen is something that's called a change in frequency, something that affects the period. In all of these, the graph started and then ended, it completed a cycle in 360 degrees. What if we were to change what's called the B value? Now B is the coefficient right in front of X. In our general formula, it's right here because it's already been factored out of that quantity. So if we change B to two, let's see what happens. Our graph has been compressed. And what's interesting is we start at zero, zero. We now complete the entire cycle at 180 degrees. So it's shortened the period. It's actually having this as a two has cut the period in half. Um, to figure out how B affects the period, all you have to do is take 360 degrees and divide by B. Since B is two here, 360 divided by two is 180 degrees. So our period here is 180 degrees. Here's a more extreme value of B. Would B is five, um, we'd have 360 divided by five and the period would be much smaller. Changing it down into the negative values causes the graph to flip and also affects the period. So let's try, uh, let's try one more graph here with a lot of things going on. Here we have shifts, we have a change in frequency, we have a change in amplitude. Let's uh, set all these values. So we'll start with A. The change in amplitude, it's now a two instead of a one. So that's gonna cause these peaks to increase and the valleys to increase. So there's two. That's, we just adjusted for that. Um, next, let's look at the two shifts. Actually, you know what, let's, let's deal with B, the frequency change. Since this is three, 360 divided by three is 120. So our, our period is gonna decrease down to 120. See, we complete an entire cycle in 120 degrees. Now the shifts. This negative one is a vertical shift in the negative direction. And this plus 45, remember, H is actually negative 45, even though this quantity has a plus sign in it. So if we decrease this to negative 45, oh, let's make it so it lets us do that. There we go. That's our graph. It still has that general sine wave pattern about it, but it's just been moved around, squashed, and stretched.